These are dry ice bubbles and we filmed them at high speed popping. But before we get to that, let me explain what's going on. Dry ice is so cold, you can't hold it with your bare hands. It's below negative 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's not normal frozen water ice, it's frozen carbon dioxide. So when you put it in warm water, it immediately, well, it looks like it's boiling, but it's not. It sublimates. That means it turns directly from a solid into a gas. And it tastes a little bit like carbonated soda. So if we dip that expanding gas into a little bit of soap water, it'll make bubbles filled with carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide gas is invisible though. So what's that fog we're seeing? Well, that's water from the air that got so cold from the gas, it condensed down into little clouds. And that's some science for you. Here are some surprising household items that fluoresce under a black light. This is laundry detergent. If you shine a black light on phone screens, most will show an unusual pattern. Duct tape, not so much. But tennis balls definitely fluoresce. Fluorescence is when you shine high energy light, like ultraviolet light on an object, and it glows. It emits lower energy light, like green, yellow, blue light, or red light. A lot of paper and labels fluoresce too. This is my favorite object though. Some of the minerals in this rock fluoresce green, despite the fact that you can't see any green in the rock. That's cool. This is a regular egg standing up on its end with nothing but some creative physics. How did I do it? Well, I just spin the egg, but there's actually a few tricks to get it to work. You have to get it spinning fast enough, so use your thumb from one hand and middle finger from the other hand to give the egg enough torque. Secondly, the egg can't be raw. It has to be hard boiled. This is what happens if you try to use a raw egg. The reason this trick works is very similar to this toy called the Phi Top. The principle is a complex combination of rolling and sliding friction between the egg and the table that pushes the egg up. And it stays standing because it's similar to a spinning top. This is what happens when you put a rubber ducky or any rubber animal in liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen is below minus 320 degrees Fahrenheit, so it takes elastic rubber and makes it brittle. This is how to pour out a candle when it appears there's nothing in the glass. Pour a bunch of vinegar into baking soda and let it bubble. You've just created a bunch of carbon dioxide, which you can dip a cup in and very carefully fill up. Since carbon dioxide is more dense than air, you can pour it. The CO2 will push all the air out of the way, starving the fire of the oxygen it needs to keep burning. And as long as you have CO2 in your cup, you can keep pouring out the candle over and over. This is not an animation. It's light in real life shining on a wall, visualizing sound waves. I made this setup that starts with a laser pointing down at a piece of mirror, taped to a balloon, stretched over a cup with the bottom cut off, and taped to a cone picking up the sound from a speaker. As I play a single note, a single wavelength of sound waves from the speaker, it vibrates the mirror, creating patterns of light on the wall. As I add more than one frequency, you start to see really cool patterns emerge. What you're seeing here is the really crazy, complex motions of the balloon vibrating from sound waves. It's like the way your eardrum moves and vibrates due to the motion of air as sound waves travel through the air. This is a glass of water, this is a mystery liquid, and this is a violet laser. That means a laser with violet light. So when I shine the laser into the water, you can see a little bit of the line. The light is scattering off of water molecules. But when I shine it into the mystery liquid, that is different. Check that out. Can you guess what it is? This is tonic water. It contains an ingredient called quinine, which fluoresces blue when you shine an ultraviolet or violet light inside. This is liquid nitrogen, and this shouldn't be possible without freezing your hand because liquid nitrogen is below negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit. But what's happening is similar to a recent video I made about the light and frost effect. Normally, water boils very quickly on a hot stove, but above a certain temperature, the water at the bottom of these droplets boils off so fast it creates a protective layer of vapor. The light and frost effect happens with the liquid nitrogen too, protecting your hand from the cold, and it happens with these droplets, protecting the rest of the water from the hot pan and allowing it to float. Have you ever noticed tears of wine on the side of a glass? You can see the wine tears best by covering the glass and then swirling the wine around to coat the sides. Some researchers at UCLA found that the wine is actually climbing up the side of the glass first 
due to surface tension interactions between water and alcohol, and then the wine drips back down. The falling droplets even sometimes bounce. These are bioluminescent waves in the ocean. I filmed them at the end of April in 2020 when a giant algae bloom hit San Diego. The algae bloom is called red tide and smells a bit like rotten sulfur. The glow of these waves is caused by a chemical reaction inside of dinoflagellates, which are a type of plankton. This kind of bioluminescence is a type of chemiluminescence, which is similar to the process that causes glow sticks to glow when you mix the chemicals together. This is a substance that'll immediately turn into a crystal if you drop a tiny little bit of the same crystal inside. Then you can microwave it again for just about a minute so it turns back into a liquid. Let it cool down to room temperature and do it all over again. I made this stuff at home and you can too with adult supervision. I started with a quarter cup of baking soda and then slowly added a liter of vinegar, but very slowly because it bubbles up. What I made is CO2 gas, but also sodium acetate. That's the substance they call hot ice and is the stuff in reusable hand warmers. After stirring slowly, I boiled it for an hour. Then I let it cool to room temperature in a jar and started all over again. If you drop this stuff into one liquid, it stays red, but in another liquid, it turns green. That's because it's a pH indicator. The first liquid was vinegar, and our indicator turns red with things that are really acidic. The second liquid was baking soda mixed with water, and that basic mixture turns our indicator green. You can even see in high speed, as the indicator hits the liquid, it reacts and immediately turns green. But if we mix the baking soda and vinegar together, well, you'll get bubbles, because CO2 is produced, but also the indicator will turn more and more yellow as the acid and base neutralize each other. If I pour more vinegar back in, it'll turn red again and make a mess. I tried another liquid that's basic, soap, but mixed with water, and it turned a nice bright yellow. Then I mixed that with the vinegar and baking soda and made an even bigger mess. Here's a brain teaser. I want to pour water from this cup all the way over here, all the way down to this cup without spilling any water. How do I do it? Here's a hint. I can use a string. And the answer is to get the string wet. Then you can hold one end at the edge of the cup with water and hold the other end over the empty cup. And then you can pour the water down the wet string. This works because water is very cohesive. That means it likes to stick to itself. So because the string is wet, the water you're pouring down the string will stick to the water already in the string and you can pour it all the way into the other cup. I only spilled a little. We filmed a bubble popping in high speed. But before we get to that, have you ever thought about why bubbles pop? Water likes to stick to itself, so it can make a shell like a balloon. The bubble shell is holding in some air pressure, which is pushing back out on the bubble. When the shell gets poked or it gets too thin from evaporation, the bubble can't hold in the air pressure anymore and it breaks. But it has to pop around the air that was inside. So you can see in high speed that it doesn't just shrink down. It pops like the sphere of air inside is still there, because it is. And that's some science. This jar does the seemingly impossible. It can hold water in upside down. How does it work? Well, let's start with this trick, which is cool enough. You can turn a jar of water over with a piece of paper on top and the paper will stick enough to hold the water in. If you start to remove the card though, the water will spill everywhere. So what's going on with this jar? I can turn it over and then very carefully remove the card completely and most of the water stays in the jar. I'm not tricking you. If I shake the jar, water spills out. So there's no lid on the jar if that's what you're thinking. And I can also prove that by sticking a pin into the water from the bottom of the the jar. So how did I do it? Well, there's a screen on the bottom of the jar. The holes are so small that surface tension of the water across each square is enough to hold all the water in. That is until it gets tipped or shaken so there's too much weight or pressure on each square and the water falls through. The hold it straight and it works. Okay, check this out. This is a regular PVC pipe and I'm gonna try to sing into it going up the scale like this. Ah. Uh... There's a note that I can't sing. To be clear, I have no problem singing that note without the pipe. Here we go. Uh... Passed right through it. Now, as a physicist, I had to know what was happening, so I looked into it. You know that note that a flute or a pipe organ hums or whistles at? That's called a resonant frequency, and I was looking for that. And when you sing into the pipe, making a complete seal with your lips, it does resonate. That means the air inside vibrates stronger and stronger. And that vibrating air pushes back on your vocal cords, making the note impossible to sing. I have a glass of oil here and I'm gonna drop an ice cube in it. Do you think the ice cube will sink or float? Let's try. And the ice cube 
Hmm, it floats halfway in the middle. Why is that? Well, I was kind of tricky about this because there are actually two different kinds of oil in the jar. I poured in vegetable oil, which is more dense than ice, and baby oil, which is less dense. But when water melts off the ice, well, water is more dense than even the vegetable oil and it'll sink to the bottom. This is what happens when you mix warm water with a mystery liquid. Can you guess what the liquid is? I'll give you a hint, it's in our atmosphere. It's nitrogen, but so cold it's in liquid form. The cloud forms because the liquid nitrogen is so cold that is below negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit and the warm water causes it to boil super fast. So it becomes very cold nitrogen gas, which then condenses some of the water in the air out into tiny water droplets that you can see with your eyes and looks just like a cloud. I was visiting Convict Lake last winter when I threw a rock on the frozen surface. Listen to this sound. It's so crazy. As the rock hits the frozen ice, It sends vibrations through the ice into the water, and those sound vibrations get bounced back and forth making unusual patterns of sound. 